This is a short video on the uh, correct operation of the Radicon robot and uh, how all the parts inside function for those that have been curious. Okay, the Radicon transmitter is a spark gap transmitter. So basically what you have you have a coil that has, has two different windings on it. First one is the buzzer. And this small screw here sets the uh, buzzer for optimum vibration, the, the rate. Consider it an oscillator if you will. And up here you have your spark gap. Now the buzzer in a lot of these will, will work but the spark gap has become corroded. If you don't have a spark across the spark gap, then there's nothing for the antenna to transmit. There be no radio waves for the robot. So it's important to keep these contacts clean. And if your buzzer is not operating, then you will adjust it with this little screw here. And it's a very fine adjustment. I mean, about an eighth of a turn will get it either working or not working. So you gotta kinda get that right in there. And inside the robot to receive the electrical, well, let's just call it radio hash that comes from the transmitter. There's really only two key components. One is this meter relay. It's basically a very sensitive meter that uh, meter movement, but instead of a dial, it closes these two contacts. The contacts are actually down here by this hole. But what triggers the meter is a device called a courier tube. And inside there's a small glass tube that has two wires that run the full length of the tube. One of the wires will end up going to ground in the robot. The other wire goes up to the antenna, which is a critical thing. If you don't have this antenna for your robot, it won't work right. And then there's a choke to block. Well, you've got to get power into the courier tube. And you don't want to be shunting your RF signal, so you run a choke, because high frequencies won't pass through the choke. This represents that relay that I showed you on the chest and then one and a half volts. And basically this glass tube is filled with uh, granulated metal and I've hand built a lot of courier tubes and it doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of difference what you use. I've used uh, aluminum, I've taken a quarter which are, isn't really silver anymore these days, there are other metals in there and just filed up the, down to a powder and filled the tubes up. You don't want the tube packed tight because what happens is, is when this is full of the granulated metal it doesn't conduct normally but as soon as it gets energized by a, a radio frequency then all of a sudden it starts conducting and it stays in that conducting state which turns this meter relay on until you physically disturb it thump it with your finger or in the case of the robot it has a little metal hammer that comes around and thumps it and that open, opens the circuit up again until it sees another radio signal come in so what happens in normal uh, robot operation is uh, the radio signal comes in, the courier tube starts conducting, that turns the meter relay contacts, the meter on, the contacts close, that energizes a motor, which is a sequencer, and it does several things. One, it advances a cam to the next sequence to go from, in this case, stop would be sequence one, the next sequence is going to be turn right or turn left, and it goes back to forward, then turn left or turn right, back to forward, and then stop. It goes through all those, each one of those sequences. But the end of each one of those sequence choices, that's when the little hammer comes down and pings the tube to shut the meter off, to shut the motor off, to stop the sequence until it sees another radio signal come through. Now just about anything will trigger a courier tube, um, any electric spark or hash, motors with brushes, vacuum cleaners, uh, blenders, drills, anything that has brushes and sparks and arcs, electric niter on your uh, furnace in your home, uh, the piezo in a little in an electric, uh, well, almost all lighters these days have a piezo igniter in them. Those will work too to send hash through. Just about anything can. So, on a Radicon robot, you can take the front cover off with just four screws. And what you see right here is the courier tube. Over here is the choke. This is the antenna wire. And this little bar right here is the hammer that hits 
the courier tube which is mounted on a spring bed. So basically, when it sees a signal, I'll hit the transmitter here. back to the first step where it's off. Some of you that have uh, done repair work on radicons have asked on the courier tube itself. These are the be the brass ends. There's the glass tube part and inside you see all the powdered metal. But you'll also see a small piece of plastic. Normally it's green but the color doesn't matter. Point is there's a piece of plastic run on the side. But what they've done there is when they built the tube, since these two wires are side by side, they put the green in the same plane as the two wires. They wouldn't want to orient the tube with one of the wires on the top and one on the bottom because the tube isn't totally packed full of metal filings, which means one of the wires would become exposed. And if it's exposed, then it isn't going to work as a courier tube anymore. So. By knowing where that is, with that little green stripe of plastic, they could have marked the glass or anything, and for whatever reason, they always used a little green piece of plastic. They know uh, how to angle and turn the tube so that they know that both contacts will be submerged in the powdered metal.